migration, the people from Syria, we don't know. Are they ISIS? Are they not? They're not coming into this country, okay? They can't. And it's his views on how to deal with the current threat from a so-called Islamic State, which should perhaps cause the biggest uproar. On Tuesday, the Belgian capital of Brussels and the heart of the European Union were struck by a devastating terrorist attack. This was a coordinated onslaught believed to have been executed by men radicalized inside European communities. Give me your reaction to what has happened. Well, I think it's outrageous. I think that when they caught the uh, young person, the uh, person that was in charge, or I guess he probably wasn't totally in charge, they don't even know who was in charge of the Paris bombings. When they caught him, he was in his neighborhood and where he grew up, and nobody even turned him in, and supposedly this is retribution for that. I think it's a disgrace. I knew Brussels years ago, and I was there probably three or four times, and it was so beautiful and so secure and so safe. And now it's an armed camp, and I'm even talking before this new bombing. It's like a different world, a different place. Uh, there's, no, there's no assimilation. What's going on there and what's going on in many other locations, like Paris and others, is a disgrace, an absolute disgrace that we allow it to happen. Obviously, the big question is what does the world do about ISIS? Uh, nobody at the moment seems to have a real game plan for stopping these kind of terror attacks. You've uh, put forward some pretty controversial views for what you think should be done. But in light of what's happened in Belgium and in Paris and indeed on mainland America, just clarify for me what you would do. If you were president of the United States tomorrow, what would you do and what would you tell countries in Europe to do to combat ISIS? Well, obviously, it's a very long and complicated question, but I would hit ISIS so hard you wouldn't believe it. And I'd get the people over there to put up their soldiers because it's about time that somebody did it. But I'd have such backup like you've never seen before in terms of air power, air strikes, etc. And you've got to take them out and you've got to take them out harshly and you've got to take them out fast. And you have no choice. These people, you know, we're now in the age of chopping off heads. Nobody would have believed this was possible. And I would hit them very hard, very fast. I was against going into Iraq, if you remember, a long time ago. I was against it from the beginning. And that was a terrible mistake going into Iraq because it destabilized the entire Middle East. Then Obama got out in the worst possible way. He left nothing behind. He gave a date, which nobody could believe. But you've got to take out ISIS, despite all of that. You've got to take them out, and you've got to take them out fast and hard. Now, that doesn't solve the problem of all of these people that are living in Brussels and living in uh, many, many cities. Uh, I won't even, I hate to even mention the cities, but cities that have such problems where the police are literally afraid to go into the neighborhoods. You know that's true, and I know that's true, and people don't even like to talk about it. But it's absolutely true. And in many cases, they only believe and they only want Sharia law which is terrible in terms of everything and especially terrible for women and the way they treat women. So you have to hit things hard and you have to be vigilant. Trump knows these views will be unpopular with some and they will always create perfect headline fodder 